Svechkov, LaRue, and Willsby. We've talked a lot about the veterans. Today's episode, it's all about the youth. Your Locked On Predators, your daily podcast on the Nashville Predators, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the Locked On Predators podcast. Thanks for making us your first listen of the day. We are your free daily Nashville Predators podcast. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Want to kick off our Tuesday episode welcoming any first-time listeners and, of course, giving that cyber shout-out to our Locked On Predators insiders and to our everydayers. We love talking Nashville Predators hockey with you. I'm Ann Kimmel. I'm a writer with Penalty Box Radio. And my friends, I have a partner in crime. You do. I'm Emma Lingen, and I'm the Predators site editor and reporter for the Hockey News. Well, when Barry Trotz took over as general manager, he promised a youth movement. Even with four big veteran offseason signings, we've already seen NHL debuts from three players and ice time for several other young faces. On today's show, we're going to take a look at the early returns for players like Fedor Svechkov and Zachary LaRue. We're going to talk about the young defensive players battling now for ice time, and we're going to revisit that young players short leash conversation before we dive into all of that want to let you know today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel new customers can place a five dollar bet and you'll get started with 150 dollars in bonus bets if you win your first five dollar bet visit FanDuel.com to get started all right, Emma, look, we know we've been around here for a while. We have seen some things since July 1st, and a lot of the focus has been on these veteran signings and what hasn't materialized yet. But today we want to take a minute to look at some of the younger players that we are seeing in Nashville so far. Emma, just to start off, are you surprised by the number of new faces or younger faces that we've seen so far this season? Um, yes. <laughs> I think that really of the the guys who we've seen come up at this point in the season, the only one who I maybe would have expected to be here by now, but like at the start of the season mm -hmm. is Zach LaRue. Mm -hmm. And even then I was kind of thinking like, ah, but they probably won't need him, you know? And, right. uh, well, here we are. And, here uh, we are. <laughs> and they needed him and, uh, they didn't only need him. They also needed Willsby and Svechkov and, Nick Blankenberg, who's not a rookie, but he's new, new to, to us. us. He's yeah. a fresh face to us. Yes. 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 Um, so that's, you know, however many call-ups now from Milwaukee that are that have not been, I would call necessary in, in the sense of like there there haven't been injuries or anything where you need to call someone up. This has been like, okay, we don't like what we have or what we have isn't good enough. So we need to, you know, go down to the farm and and see what else we got, which is, I mean, that's how it works. But it's also a little bit, like I said, unexpected uh, this early in the season. I would not have thought that we'd be dipping into the AHL pool quite this quickly. Yeah, I think there's a lot about this season that we didn't expect, <laughs> but this is definitely one of them. I'm with you when training camp wrapped up. I really felt like, A, we're going to see Mark Del Geizo, um, and and B, Zachary LaRue, I felt like, was definitely going to get an opportunity to make an NHL debut. I really kind of penciled him in for spring, yeah. you know, late winter or spring. Um, I haven't forgot I, about Del Geizo, that he was a that he didn't start the season here. Yeah. Um, so that yeah. that's another one, too, that I, I kind of considered him to here. be a lock, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And we're going to we're going to talk about Mark Del Gaizo later on in this episode. Oh, you know we, we are. <laughs> we are talking about Mark Del Gaizo friends. I was very surprised yet delighted if I'm being fully transparent that Fedor Svechkov got the call up. And this is somebody that I did not necessarily think we would see this season just because he had played one season in Milwaukee. Um 
that was, I think his first um, North American hockey season. So full season. Yeah. Yeah. And so it was like, okay, this is somebody who I think they're going to let cook a little bit longer. But when things were tanking a little bit with the Nashville Predators, one of the things that you can say is that these call-ups are a shot in the arm for everybody. And, and I think they bring an energy. When you have an NHL debut, regardless of who it is, there's just energy for everybody. And I thought it was really interesting, and I was so excited that Fedor Svechkov got called up. He has played five games with the Predators, got his first goal versus the Minnesota Wild, and it was fantastic. He doesn't have any assists yet. He's averaging about 11-17 time on ice. Fedor Svechkov, 21-year-old, great. I'm telling you, this kid is so delightful. I got a chance to talk with him last year uh, when I was covering some Milwaukee games. He is just totes adorbs. Um, such a great kid. Very hungry. Very uh, driven. Last season in Milwaukee, he played 57 games, had 16 goals, 39 points. He was a plus 12. He missed a couple of games at the start of the season in Milwaukee. And I don't mean to rat this person out, but I'm totally ratting out Reed Schaefer, who is the one that shot the puck that hit Fedor Svechkov in the face and, and took him out of some games. Reed Schaefer. And that was also after he, Svechkov, had had, what was it, a back injury or something that kept him out? Like, he missed part of training camp, too. Yes, he did. That. Yep. Um, so he's got an injury history as well. Yeah. And then Reed Schaefer, just cherry on top right there. <laughs> um, but we've gotten a chance to see Fedor Svechkov. And, and so I'm curious, Emma, I know we only have five games to look at. This is a very small sample size at the NHL level. But what are your first impressions of this young kid? I mean, my first impressions are this kid's going to be really good. Uh, he's, yeah. you know, he's a very skilled center um, who is fast. He's a really good skater for how big he is, um, which I think you don't always see a lot, especially with centers. Um, he didn't look like it, you know, it's just, it's a weird situation because he is, you know, like you said, and like I said, I don't think we expected to see him this early. Mm -hmm. I don't think that he looks not ready or anything. I think that he looks like he belongs, but I think that the predators probably would have had higher aspirations for him. Um, you know, than than to be in the position he's in right now. And this ties into our conversation that we'll be having later about young players getting a short leash and getting less playing time than they otherwise would. Um, so he's been, you know, he's been on the the third line with Mark Jankowski and Luke Evangelista. Um, and he's looked good. He's looked mm -hmm. fine. Um, but it hasn't been anything. You know, I, I think that we haven't really seen him in a ton of high leverage situations, which is kind of what you would want from him. Yes, I agree with that. There was limited ice time in close situations for Fedor Svechkov and some of the other younger players. And it's tricky because, like you mentioned, we did not see a lot of him in training camp. You know, he was out with injury. So, there wasn't a lot to like we saw LaRue's body of work in training camp and we could say, OK, you know what? This is somebody I can see getting to this next level here this season. We didn't really get that much body of work. We didn't have a big sample size for Sechkov. But I have to say in five games, I'm with you. I think this is somebody whose potential is very high. I like you. He is he's listed as six feet tall, but he is much bigger in a lot of ways. I also wish he would stand up straight, which I know sounds crazy, but if you watch him skate, you just want him to stand up straight. Even just like sitting or standing normally, he's, he kind of hunches. He kind of hunches. Yeah. Stand up straight yeah. in front of Own your space. Yes. Or Svechkov. Own your space. But I think he is, he is freakishly strong and freakishly mobile, which are not necessarily two things that you see go together. It's very Philip Forsberg-esque. Maybe not to that level, of course, but that's who he reminds me of a little bit because you are taken by surprise sometimes by the strength of Philip Forsberg. You know his high-end skill. I think Fedor Svechkov kind of has that where he has the best of both, and you're kind of taken back by that. I do like that we've seen him a little bit 
on the power play. Um, in Milwaukee, he, four of his 16 goals last season were power play goals. So I like that. I also like that he has not come in here and appeared like this was too big for him. Now, he was very honest. He was nervous in his first game, his first couple of shifts. He was a little bit nervous. Um, but I really feel like he doesn't hesitate. And there are players with a vast array of experience in the NHL on this Nashville Predators team that I feel like are hesitant. And I don't know that we've really seen that from Svechkov. Like this is a kid who's shooting the puck. This is a kid who is carrying the puck into the zone. This is a kid who's going to the net front and battling for space. And that for me is really encouraging. Yeah. And that's, you know, partly why I, and I think this kind of gets glossed over or overlooked a lot, but that's kind of part of why I like having him at least to start, uh, you know, in his early NHL career here, I like having him on a line with a, like a Mark Jankowski, because I think that Jankowski now he really is huge. Um, and, and he He can, he is not necessarily a skill guy, but he, can be the one to create the space to kind of protect and and open up lanes for a guy like Svechkov. Like, yes, Svechkov has the strength. He can do it himself. But I like that. I feel like Jankowski is a little bit of a like a safety net for him Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, kind of helps lift him up. And so I really like that combination as well. And you're right. I think that he does. You know, he goes for the the weird angles and he just he takes the shot. And I would say Zach LaRue does a lot of that as well. And I think that, like you said earlier, it's it's a shot in the arm for a team that desperately needed one. And they've now had several shots in the arm and it's, we're getting to the point where it's like, guys, you're going to run out of people to call up from Milwaukee. There's only so many in Milwaukee. Okay. Uh, Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's been good. You'd like to see a little bit more of that. It's almost better. Like, I mean, it's hard. You got to give them credit. It's hard to come into a situation like that. I mean, making your NHL debut is hard enough, but then to do it in a, in the situation that this team is in right now, it certainly doesn't make it any easier. Um, and, and so I give them a lot of credit for that. And I think that this, you know, it's hard, but I think that this is going to benefit these guys in their long-term development as well. I agree with that. Coming up, we're going to hear from Fedor Svechkov what he had to say after he scored that first NHL goal. And we're going to share with you what Zachary LaRue said about what Emma is talking about. What is it like to be a rookie joining a team that is struggling? Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members. Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. All you have to do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. It's the way daily fantasy sports should be played. It's not you against a thousand strangers, it's just you against the Prize Picks projections for your favorite players in your favorite sports. Prize Picks puts its members first, so all withdrawals are fast, safe, and secure. When your picks hit, you can withdraw your money in as quick as 15 minutes. Look, we know the Predators are leaning heavy on UC Soros to protect the net. Why not include a more pick on Soros saves this week? So download the Prize Picks app today. Use our code locked on NHL, and you're going to get $50 instantly when you play $5. That's code locked on NHL on prize picks to get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive that $50 bonus. It is guaranteed. So check out all the action at prize picks. Run your game. All right, Emma, we got to see Fedor Svechkov's first NHL goal. This is going to be the first of many. I really, I really think this is a young player who's really got something there. Uh, it was in Minnesota, so we didn't get a chance to talk to him, but we did get a video of an interview. He was asked about scoring that first goal and what he is hoping to work on going forward this is what Fedor Svechkov had to say I was so excited last couple of games because I had a couple scoring chances and uh, uh, I feel like I can score and do more on the ice 
and uh, I have to show more and uh, I hope it's gonna come like more goals and more points. Yeah. As you said, for for you and for the team, is you just you got to keep trying, you got to keep moving along here. What what do you want to take from this one as you move forward into next week? As a forward, score goals. You know. <laughs> it's the biggest part of the game. If you're scoring more, you're winning. So we gotta score more, I think. I just can't even. He's so darling. <laughs> He's so precious. He is so darling. And can I just say, too, I first met this kid when he came over last, so not this past summer, but the summer before. And mm -hmm. he was in town living with Yakov Trenin, who he played against last night. In, yeah. Or when was it? Sunday? Saturday? Whenever. Days, it's all a blur. Days run together. Yakov Trenin's in Minnesota, and that's who he scored his first goal against. Anyway, um, his English has gotten so much better. Incredible. Um, you can not even just, you know, I'm, I don't even just mean like grammar and diction, but like his, you can tell he's a lot more confident when he speaks now. And that's exciting to see. But like, honestly, what he said there, you know, about maybe it's, it's a result of you know, he's speaking a second language, but score more goals. You're a forward. Score more goals. Sometimes you really just have to simplify it. And it's like yes. these guys look like they're overthinking everything. And it's like sometimes you need someone to come in and just be like, hey, man, we just need to score some goals. Do the Svechkov. Just yeah. do what Svech says. Yeah. A hundred percent. Love this kid. And I really do think we are going to see much more from his game as he gets more experience. This is one I am, I got to tell you, I'm really excited about Svechkov. Do you want to talk about Zachary LaRue? Another one that makes me go, oh, because just another really cool person off the ice, um, as well as being somebody who's contributing on the ice. He's played 20 games with the Predators, two goals, five points. And this was somebody that we talked about in the offseason, Emma, when the Predators did not re-sign Kiefer Sherwood, which has turned out to be a thing. It's been a thing. But Zach LaRue is your best apples to apples as far as that just extra something that Kiefer Sherwood brought to the ice. Um, and, and he's been able to bring that to Nashville. I think, I think he's really been not only kind of that shot in the arm for a rookie making his debut, but he kind of has that sandpaper thing that Kiefer Sherwood took with him when he left. Yeah. And as far as Kiefer Sherwood goes, you know, we, I love Kiefer Sherwood, love but him. I also think that when a team has had the type of start to a season that the predators have, then Every guy who you let walk the year before becomes a thing. It's like, well, what if we For had done sure. this differently? <laughs> like, Nashville Predators fans are, it's emotional sunburn. Yeah. It's something that like under normal circumstances, if you touch your arm, it doesn't hurt. If you get sunburned and you touch your arm, it stings. That's how people are reacting to seeing like Kiefer Sherwood, Kevin Lankin, and you know, all the, you know, Phil Tomasino scored two goals. That's just emotional hockey sunburn, y'all. Put yeah. on some aloe. But go yeah. ahead, Emma. Yeah. No, I that's that's it. I mean, I think that LaRue does bring that sandpaper edge, but he also has, I mean, I would argue that he I don't well, I don't think anyone would necessarily argue against me on this, but uh, he has more skill than than mm -hmm. Keith Sherwood does. Um again, with him being limited to those third line yeah. or fourth line rather minutes. Uh, you're not seeing as much of him. And, you know, the, the one thing I just really love about him is, and, and I mean, this is true of a lot of young players who are fresh in the league, you know, they're hungry and they're playing for their, for their spot really. And I just love how passionate he is. Mm -hmm. I mean, I saw in the game against, was it Tampa? I think Again, they I, all run together. Blur anyway, together. He had so the game was tied near the end of regulation. He had a breakaway opportunity, like perfect chance. No, it was Minnesota. It was Minnesota yes. because I remember it was Gustafson stopped it. So it was a great, like absolutely great chance. There is nothing more he could have done. He just he had he 
had the puck on the breakaway. He created the chance. He created the space. He just got stopped by a really good goaltender. And that's like what we were talking about before about, you know, you don't want to use snake bit as a crutch Mm -hmm. or something to lean on. But that's just like you could tell. I mean, it was a perfect shot and it got stopped. And you could see like minutes later how upset LaRue still was that that didn't go in. And it's like that's where you get, you know, on one hand, I like the passion, but at the same time, I'm like, well, now let's not get too upset because we still need you to go out and keep doing that some more. Because if you keep doing things like that, they will go in. They will go in the back of the net. And so I think that, again, this whole team right now is just struggling on an individual level. And this is what we talked about on yesterday's show. But I think that it's hard to really kind of boost each other up and and lift each other up when everyone is kind of struggling. And so I think for a guy like him, I really like his energy, his fire. Um, I think he's doing all the right things. You know, he has managed to not get benched yet by Andrew Burnett, which is saying something. 20 games, y'all. <laughs> That's really saying something. Um, you know, he took the... <laughs> He took that high stick to the face from Timo Meyer in New Jersey. And oh man, he and I, I love that kid. We had a very candid conversation about that. I will not share it uh, here, but we had a very (laughs) candid conversation about that moment. And it just really gave you some insight into like how much fire and how much passion Mm -hmm. this kid has. And I think that, you know, when a team is going through times like this, you need that. Yeah. It's interesting to be a young player making an NHL debut, which is the most exciting thing. It's what you've worked for for so many years. It's the goal that you just don't ever know for sure you're going to achieve. But you're doing it on a team that is just on the struggle bus. And I talked with Zach LaRue. I have an article out um, at Penalty Box Radio after this conversation with LaRue. But I talked to him about like, What is that like? You know, you come in and you're like, it is my NHL debut, baby. And you look around and you're like, and Steven Stamkos isn't scoring goals. (laughs) And so, like, how do you navigate your enthusiasm with, you know, kind of what's going on and, and being connected in with the team and being in it with the team because you're in it, you know, and I thought it was really wise. I, you know, people have preconceived notions about Zach LaRue. And I just think, man, if you talk to him, he is not who you think he might be. Um, it's just a great kid, but he was talking about, you know, I am excited and I know that I can bring positivity. And so my role is I'm going to keep a smile on my face and I'm going to listen. And he's like, I'm not the kid that, you know, I'm not somebody as a rookie who's going to stand up in the locker room and make a speech. But I can do the work. I can have a smile on my face and and I can just work with these guys to try to get out of it. So I just really uh, I like Zach LaRue. I agree with you, though. This is not a fourth line player. I would really like to see him be able to show off his skill, his offensive skill set a little more. But he is giving the team what they are used to having on that fourth line with uh, Kiefer Sherwood out. Coming up, we do need to talk about defensemen. We've got a couple new faces in the lineup and one that's not. Andrew Burnett, let's talk about the leash length. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get 150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL in its all-in-one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more. And it's all going to be on the same page where you place your bets. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today. Again, you're going to get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win that first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. 
All right, Emma, two very new faces, not necessarily age-wise, but you all know how we group Tommy Novak in with the young people. Well, we're going to do that uh, with Nick Blankenberg, Adam Willsby as well. These are two defensemen that we have seen uh, on the blue line in the last couple of games. Adam Willsby, of course, a Swedish defenseman. Let's hear it for the next Matthias Ekholm. Made his NHL debut against Philadelphia. Also became one of my favorite players because he wore his helmet on his rookie lap. Thank you, Adam Willsby. Um, I really like what we've seen. This is somebody that I think if you had listened to Barry Trotz in the preseason and early in the season, Adam Willsby was a name that was always kind of at the tip of Barry Trotz's tongue as far as somebody that they were watching, Emma. So I don't necessarily think it's super surprising that we saw him right now. Do you? No. I, I mean, again, maybe a little bit early earlier than I would have thought, but I mean, I thought there was a chance we might even see him last year. I mean, Barry Trotz really likes him. Um, and, and it's easy to see why. I mean, he was really, I was really impressed with him in this early go he's had here in Nashville. And I mean, he had that one shift against, was it Tampa that he was on the ice for three minutes and 40 Three, no, again, it was Minnesota. It was Minnesota. He was on the ice for like three minutes and 43 seconds or something. It was ridiculous. And I think Derek McKenzie was the one who said, yeah, that's probably a record that he will hold for some time. I don't think yeah. we're going to be trying to beat that anytime soon. But I mean, it's he again, the moment hasn't looked too big for him. It's been, you know, he he's looked really solid and really good on on the back end there. Yeah, and he played several seasons uh, in the Swedish League. I also, I just have a thing. I think players who play in the Swedish Hockey League or pe uh, players who play in the Finnish Professional Hockey League, that those two places make, make men out of boys. And I really think he kind of came in here uh, with a really high-end defensive skill set. The other one that we need to talk about is Nick Blankenberg. And let me tell you, this is what I know about Nick Blankenberg. He is doing stuff because not once, but twice during Nashville Predators games that Nick Blankenberg has played in, there are balloons on the screen. Um, I, we don't know why that works, you all. I don't know. It, for you listening on audio, balloons just popped up on the screen. And we're really celebrating. Balloons for Nick Blankenberg. Balloons for Blankenberg, everyone. Um my We're son has called me. You guys, <laughs> I think it's like, what is going on? <laughs> My son has called me twice over the last three games and been like, who is number 37? He's everywhere. Who is that? And I'm like, that's Blankenberg. And then I paused because I couldn't remember his name. And again, I called him Mr. <laughs> Mr. Blankenberg. Um, he really has been everywhere. This is not his NHL debut. He played, uh, I think, 55 games in Columbus. Um, but this has been a player who has been partnered with Luke Shen. And the two of them, okay, okay, we see you. Yeah. Well, no, Blankenberg has been with Shea, I think. Frank and Wills Willsby has been with Shen. Willsby has been with Shen. Yeah. Yeah. But – Either way, yes, I think, like, you nailed it. This guy is everywhere. He is everywhere out there. He is like a little wrecking ball. He's yes. out there, and he's out there disrupting plays, and he's throwing his body in front of shots, and he is, you know, really good, smart, heads-up defensive play, but he's also trying to, you know, mix it up and and really just be kind of a, a – pain in the butt for the the opponent and i i've really i again i really didn't know much about him before mm -hmm. he signed in nashville but i i've been really impressed so far yeah this has been a player who has stood out uh and again you've had to kind of thumb through the roster wait a minute 37 who's 37 it's mr blankenberg for everyone who is wondering mr blankenberg is mr. on the ice sir blankenberg sir blankenberg has reported for duty one player emma that we have not seen since the new jersey game and we're going to talk about this on locked on mark del guyso mark del guyso has played 16 games with the Predators. He's got three assists. I have really liked Mark Del Guiso's game with the Nashville Predators. The New Jersey game, 
not great. But let's go down the list really quick. Let's name all of the players who were really great in that New Jersey game. UC Saras. Yeah, we're done. That's the that's, that's the sum. That's it. That's the list. That's the whole list. And so I have to tell you, I have a little bit of frustration that Mark Del Guizzo is benched. Jeremy Lazan, of course, left that game with injury. This led to Willsby and Sir Blankenberg being recalled and Del Guizzo stepping out of the lineup. Now, I get you want to get eyes on Willsby and Sir Blankenberg. I get that. But I do not like Mark Del Guizzo out of the lineup. I'm not I'm not a fan of Del Guizzo being a healthy scratch, Emma. Just full disclosure. I really don't like this because not even like I I even I would have been okay. I mean, I wouldn't have loved it, but I would have I would have let it fly if he was a healthy scratch for one game. For that. sure. Have a reset. Yeah. Quick reset, get back in the lineup, mm -hmm. you know, get in the game. I just think having such a young player, like a relatively inexperienced player, and having such a short leash on said player, and again, it's not just Del Guizzo. It seems to be a trend with Andrew Brunette. That has got to do a number on a kid's confidence Come if you're going to take him out for an extended period of time. I mean, we haven't seen him since that New Jersey game and that has really got to mess with your head. And like, yes, I'm big on accountability. He did not have a good game. There needs to be accountability for that, but you know who else didn't have a good game? Every freaking other guy on the ice. <laughs> so Thank you. why, why are we singling are we doing? him out? Why are we singling him out? Um, and like you said, you want to get eyes on Willsby and Blankenberg, see what you got there. I get that. That's fine. But there, when Mark Del Guizzo, that one game aside, has consistently been one of your better defensemen, Thank you. why is he still sitting on the bench? And that really, really frustrates me. And it frustrates me a lot about I'm still not there, and I'm not trying to open this can of worms, but I'm still not there yet on firing Andrew Brunette. But mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that I agree with every single decision he's ever made. And actually the one that I take great issue with is exactly this, that he is yes. still, he's doing this and having this really short leash with these young players, because I feel like it's going to damage their confidence. I a hundred percent agree. And we're not touching the rest of that. Like we just cracking the lid and we put the lid right back on that Andrew Burnett discussion. But I am with you. That is my biggest frustration. And especially with a young player like Mark Del Guizzo, who was consistent in his performances, has been very good on a team where a lot of people were not performing with consistency. He was, again, not the only player that couldn't get it together in New Jersey. And now he's in a situation where he has to sit and wait to see if somebody gets injured or if Willsby or Sir Blankenberg screw up to get his chance again. And I'm just not sure that's best for a young player. And, and so I am with you. This is this is a concern for me. It's going to be something that I'm going to be watching very carefully because I I think I think this team is a good team with Mark Del Guizzo on the ice. We'll see what Andrew Burnett says when we call him and tell him. <laughs> I mean, listen, I agree. And again, if you're going to bench him for one game, fine. I think that that's fair. But at this point, if that's the rationale and the, the you know, your MO here going forward, then you also should have benched Brady Shea by now. You should have benched Jonathan Marcheseau by now. You should have benched Ryan O'Reilly by now. Like, not saying after, you know, their most recent performances, but in general, in I mean, general. those guys have had bad turnovers that led to goals for the other team. And that's essentially... Why you bench Mark Del Guizzo? He hasn't been in the lineup since. And so it's just, it's frustrating to see guys getting held to different standards. And again, I think it goes back to guys being treated for what they have done and not what they're doing right now to help this team. Um, yes. It's always, well, 
they here's all of their their resume and all the nice things they've done in the past on all these previous teams. Okay, well, what are they doing to help this team right now? Exactly. And, and it's it's frustrating because they get held to a different standard because of that. Yeah, we are going to be keeping our eye on the roster decisions that Andrew Burnett is going to make going forward, especially with these younger players, Fedor Svechkov, Zach LaRue, Mark Del Geizo. Of course, we're going to be watching Willsby and Blankenberg as well. Would love to know your thoughts on what you have seen and what has stood out to you with these young new faces in Nashville's uh, lineup. Leave us a comment on the YouTube page. You can, of course, reach out to us on social media, LO underscore Predators. Before we sign off, Emma, where can everyone everyone find you and your work you can find me on twitter and instagram at emma underscore lingen and you can find my work at the hockey news and you can find me on social media at Ann K underscore Mama on Ice. You can find my work at Penalty Box Radio as well. That's going to do it for this Tuesday episode of the Locked On Predators podcast. Thanks for making us your first listen of the day. Tomorrow, game day, we'll be back and we will be previewing the Preds game against the Maple Leafs. We'll see you then.